Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's video, we are talking about Fordham's Tumblr. This is a little different than the tumblers I've ever used before. I've got some fun features on it. Let's go check it out right now. One of the first things you might notice is that it's going to stand a little differently than other rotary tumblers. Another feature that I really like is the clear barrel it makes it easy for me to see what's in there. Also notice that there's a display up here that has a lot of different options. We'll talk about those in just a second. Another thing I like is the easy portability as there's a handle here on the back. It makes it easy for me to move this around. Now, it should go without saying, you want to make certain you have this on a nice solid flat surface before you run this machine. Also comes with a power cable as well as your instructions. Now a couple of other things that should go without saying that you're going to need. So we're going to need some stainless steel shot. Now this is a, a kilogram which is about 2.2 pounds. So we're going to need something like that. Plus I'm also going to use a burnishing compound. In this case I'm using the Elma Clean 85. Now in my studio I have a number of tumblers and I always use stainless steel mixed shot. The mixed is great because then I can get into different areas, but I've found over the years that the shot that I have been using is a little bit large. So there's a lot of areas in my jewelry that don't actually get burnished when I use the rotary tumbler. Now you can see here that the shot from Fordham is much, much finer. Again, it's stainless steel and I only ever buy stainless steel because it helps to inhibit any of that rusting that might happen if you have steel shot. So this is going to get into much finer areas and this is what I choose to use for this machine. And when you first get your tumbler, you'll notice that there's a nice little yellow piece of tape on here that gives some instructions. This is going to tell you that you need to be very cautious with the types of solvents and cleaners that you use in this. You should never use anything more than just like a mild soap or detergent. And this Elma Clean is going to fit that bill. So you never wanna use anything that contains ammonia or solvents such as alcohol, thinner gasoline, etc. Any of those are actually going to void your warranty because they're going to break down the seals that are in this machine. Now, another thing I really like about this machine is it's super easy to load and unload. All I need to do is lift this bar right here. I'm going to slide it forward and then I'm able to slip this out. And now all I have to do is lift the top and I can place my pieces inside. It's large enough that I can get my hand in here to be able to look through my pieces. And because the barrel is clear, I can easily find the pieces that are in them. So first thing I need to do is I'm going to add all of my shot in here. Now this machine, you really don't want to overload it, but you also don't want to underload this. You'll notice that it doesn't fill up very much on this. And when it comes time to adding my pieces, I want to make certain that I've got a pretty decent ratio. I filled the tumbler with a kilogram, which is 2.2 pounds of my stainless steel tumbler media. But when it comes to adding my work pieces, I can only add just under half a pound, 0.44 pounds is what they suggest, or 0.2 kilograms. Once I have that, I'm just going to add ever so little bit of my Elma Clean, and I'm going to fill it up to, with water to about the halfway point, which is halfway in between this rubber seal. Here I have four different rings that I've made just for this purpose. I have gone through like the soldering process and before that I did some pre cleanup on these, but that's it. So these are right out of the pickle. So you'll notice that they kind of have that soft matte white finish on these. And when I put them into the tumbler and run this, it's going to burnish them and give me a much higher shine. I've already loaded the shot into the barrel. So all I need to do now is place my pieces. Again, I'm going to fill this with with water just to this halfway point. This is not hot water, just a way for me to fill this here. Again, I'm going to fill that up to that halfway line inside the barrel. And now I need to just add just a little bit of this Elma Clean. I like to just put a little tiny bit here in the cap, make some, so I don't use too much. To insert our lever, all I'm going to do is insert this into the hole that has the hole all the way through, move it into the point that does not have a hole and push this down. And now everything is locked into place and we are ready to go. Okay, now that we have all of that, all I need to do is place the machine onto 
the rollers. I'm going to turn this on. And then next, I have a number of settings here that I can select from. So first we have a timer that can be selected in 20 intervals from zero to 180 minutes. And this is in 15 minute increments. So if I push through this, you can see that it will go through all of these different settings at 15 minutes. And then to get back, I just would cycle through all of that. We also have the ability to go faster or slower. Now there are 20 settings from 5% to 100%. Soft or thinner pieces should be run at a little slower speed. So that's going to be the, what I have in here. I've got those rings, they're sterling silver, so I'm going to run those at a slower speed. Uh, because the rotation, it varies depending on the work pieces and the media solution, the barrel is not measured in RPMs. So that's why we've got that uh, 5% to 100%. Then the other thing that's kind of cool, and this is where this is really different, is that I have a rotation change. So I can make this go forward and then I can make it go backwards. Now it's automatically going to swap directions uh, as it goes through some of these programs. And that's going to make it so that your piece actually gets a little bit more coverage. The changing in this direction of rotation is going to produce a better finish and more even results. Now again, they can be set from zero to 20 minutes, zero giving constant one direction rotation, and then one to 20 gives an alternating direction with the number selected indicating that number of minutes in between intervals. So another really cool operation on here is the memory. So let's say there's something that you're doing all of the time and you like the finish that it's getting, you can set up a memory on this. Now the manual has step-by-step -step instructions that you can follow to set up your memory. Now, when I very first start this without changing any of my settings on here, you'll notice that what it's going to do is go very fast. Now, in my case, that is not ideal here because you can hear it's actually just throwing things at the side and I'm not really getting any good burnishing effect. Because I'm working with smaller pieces that are lighter weight, I need to bring that speed down. So I'm going to slow this down and you'll notice that again, it changes in those 5% increments. Now I'm gonna bring this way down to about a 10 and that way I'm going to start to get that tumbling action going again. And now I can hear that it's kind of moving around in my pieces in there. The number 15 here tells me that this is going to run for 15 minutes. Now because I didn't change anything, after one minute it's going to stop and then it's going to change directions and it'll go the opposite direction. And now we'll do that for one more minute and then it will continue to alternate for that 15 minute cycle. Once it's finished, we'll take it off the base, open it back up, and like I said, it's really not that difficult to get in here. Of course, we do have to deal with some of the soap. So I have a paper towel here, and I can easily find my pieces because I can actually see them. And there are the four rings, all beautifully burnished and just about ready to set. Now I could leave these in for longer. Some people think that this is going to work harden, but it's really not. There's not enough pressure hitting on these. So the outer surface will be hardened a little bit, but there's not going to be any significant hardening deep throughout the piece. So these could still be easily uh, soft. So in my case of a ring, a sterling silver ring, I'm gonna put these back on a ring mandrel and hit them with a nylon mallet to give them a little bit more strength and then I'm ready to go. When it comes to storing the shot, you can store it in this barrel and it can be left wet. Uh, I like to clean mine every now and then so I never store it when it's dirty, but because it is stainless, it should not rust. So as you can see, this is a little bit different type of a rotary tumbler. At least they're different than the machines that I've ever had in my studio, and I've had a number of them. Again, I really like the fact that it has that plastic barrel. I'm not going to be worried about the rubber from those rubber black ones wearing down or degrading and then getting all over my pieces because that is definitely a problem I have had in the past. I also really like the fact that I can see this. I can see where my pieces are 
as I'm trying to fish them out. I don't just have to dump the whole thing like I've always had to do before. Now it should go without saying anytime your tumbler media or the water that's in there is dirty, you need to go ahead and empty that out. Clean off your shot, but that's simply done by putting it into a, a really fine mesh strainer and rinsing it off with water. Then I can put it right back in my tumbler, add my burnishing compound, and I'm ready to get going once again. So this is definitely a tool I would highly suggest that you look into if you happen to be looking for a tumbler. Now, you should also note that this is not going to polish your piece. Polishing and burnishing are two very different techniques. This is a burnishing technique. Basically, we have little hammers hitting our metal and that's what is giving us that brighter finish that we think of as polished. But again, it truly is not polishing, but rather burnishing. If you guys like this video series, make sure you subscribe, give me a thumbs up and ring that bell. Mark that you want all notifications so that you don't miss any of the next videos. We'll talk to you guys soon.